Hello, this is Paolo Copage and welcome to a new Let's Play on my channel with the game RimWorld, a colony simulator by Tyne and Sylvester and Ludion Studios. Now, what is RimWorld? Well, in a nutshell, you start with three colonists which have crash landed on a certain planet which is randomly generated and from there you have to establish yourself, start making up a colony, advance your technology, deal with the people around you, the inhabitants of that world and any animals that might crop up. Hopefully have people join your colony to make it larger and get the technology up to the point where you can make your spaceship up again out of parts and fly off the world and get back to civilization, wherever that may be. That, that question is never answered. We just need to get off the planet as soon as we can. So that's the game pretty much, all in all. This is Alpha 12. Now I've been playing since about Alpha, I think it was 8 or 9. And I'm absolutely in love with this game. For me, it's a cross between sort of the uh, complexity and storytelling wordings of Dwarf Fortress, I guess is the closest one. Uh, but it has the aesthetics of Prison Architect. So you have the complexity and the storytelling, as I said, process of Dwarf, Forest, but for, uh, Dwarf Fortress, but it's a lot nicer to look at and therefore it's a lot easier to understand what's going on and just keep an eye on things in general. Now the gent who's making this, Tynan, he's actually on a six month break at the moment. He's just having a, a bit of a holiday as he's been working on this for, I believe, the past couple of years. So he's just taken six months well earned rest as this has started to snowball. It's, this game's getting very popular. So we're about halfway through that six month period at the moment. So I thought now would be a good time to pick up Alpha 12 and, and delve into it and have a play along and, and see what's going on. Now, there are going to be a few prerequisites when it comes to this basically vanilla playthrough. Um, now, RimWorld does have a, quite a massive modding scene at the moment and uh, there's a lot of mods you can download to make either your life easier or make the game more complicated depending on which way you want to go about it. As far as this playthrough is concerned, bar from the core uh, game files, which you have to have running, I will be running EDB interface. And the only thing that that does is brings up all your colonists at the top of the screen, which just makes it a bit easier for you to keep your eye on them, which is tip top, a lot easier than actually having to find them and go through and, and see what's wrong with them. As you can see, I have dabbled in a few more, but those are gonna be turned off for this playthrough. That was just for me to have a look at. So we'll ignore that the better part so first things first we need to create a world now the the, the uh, rules I'll be working with this playthrough will be that everything will be random so we will have a random world uh, we'll be playing with the random storyteller which I'll go into in a second and we'll be having random colonists as far as I'm concerned this game is all about the story it, you can strategize and you can pick the perfect colonist to start with but that sort of takes away the fun of playing the game because it's it you almost you almost giving yourself a advantage before you've even started which is all well and good if you just want an easy playthrough but it's a lot more interesting to see how these people who aren't necessarily the perfect ones to start with get on and and, and create the colony and obviously with people coming in to the colony as well as you play along it's uh, it makes it just a bit more interesting to watch and that's what i like about this it's it's just completely random and uh, it hopefully means that, although you've probably seen RimWorld on other channels, what you're going to see here isn't necessarily going to be the same, which is all good. It's all good. So we want, yep, the, sort of the second from large size world. And we're just going to press randomize a few times and settle on that one. So ONDT will be our random world and click generate. And wow, there's quite a bit of a frozen section there. Hmm, interesting. And there's a little bit of greenery, a bit of desert, a bit of arid dry land as well. It, it's okay. It's a little bit favoured towards the uh, the uh, Arctic period, but that's fine. That's fine. We, we won't worry too much about that. And then we need to crack on with the colony. So the first thing we need to choose is our storyteller, which will be Randy Random. As you can see, there are two other ones as well. Cassandra Classic is your, your sort of traditional storytelling mode for this game where she slowly ramps up the difficulty and the encounters going through it which in turn leads you to this climatic ending where you even need to get off the planet with what you've got 
or else you're just going to be overrun. Which is okay from a sort of movie perspective, but it can get a bit boring after you've done it a few times. So we're not going to worry about her. As you can see, there's also Phoebe Chillax. She used to be known as Phoebe Base Builder. And that was a much more chilled out version game, hence the name. Uh, the only problem with that, as far as the Let's Play and something to watch is concerned, is it, it's a little bit quiet. There's not too much going on. So we're going for our man, Randy Random. Now with him, he doesn't care you know, how well you're doing. The only thing that really gets rated as far as the encounters that you have come against your colony is how much wealth is in that colony. The higher the wealth, regardless of how big your colony is, the more chance you have of having a, a raiding party or what have you come at a size which can be unmanageable. But again, that's half of the fun. So we're going to see what goes on with that. And here we have the difficulties, and we're just going to go for rough. Now with rough, it's classed as a rough planet, threats can be quite dangerous, and there are no bonuses to colonist mood or crop yields, which means that's normal difficulty, which is more than enough. If we find though that with Randy over time, not a lot's happening, I may go into the menu and crank up the the difficulty just so it's a bit more interesting to watch as i said i'm not really aiming to get these colonists off the planet if it ends in a big dramatic ending then that's fine by me as long as it lasts more than a few episodes so let's crack on with randy random and as you can see this is the world we've just created denabola al samaka denabola al samaka yes right that's how you say it and then we get to choose where we want to land now Usually you can zoom on in and have a little bit of a look around and you can choose exactly where you want to go. And as you can see, we've got small hills or we can go for flat or mountainous. It just depends on how many uh, areas are blocked off by, by rocks in your playthrough. And the other thing to keep in mind is the growing period. As you can see, it's April to September here. In fact, it's April to September all over the place. Let's move a bit. Let's go up a bit. There we go, May to August. So as you can see, it, it can all differ. What was that? Growing period never. Jeez. Don't think we'll be playing that on now. Now, the only prerequisite I have in this game, just to make it slightly easier for me to start off with, seeing as I won't have much choice over who my colonists are and what their traits are and how good they are, is that the growing period is all the time. So we will just press random... Oh, year round. That's... That, that was it. I shouldn't have clicked so quickly. There we go. So we have a uh, year round. Just come on out. We're in the arid shrubland. We have large hills. It's quite a lot of rain considering it's in an arid shrubland, but never mind. And the stone types we have is granite, slate, and marble. Marble's good for making statues and whatnot to sell to trade people to get some more sil uh, silver your way. And granite's a pretty decent hard rock. It's not the hardest, I don't think, but again, it will do. So uh, we'll just go to advance and we'll play on a slightly larger map. Let's close that down. As you can see, still the same place there. And we shall now choose our colonists. Now, with the colonists, again, I'm not too fussed about their skills. There are certain skills which people think you should have in your starting three in order to make the game manageable. M manageable. Manageable, yeah. So usually you need someone who can shoot so they can hunt. Someone who's got decent social skills so they can uh, become your jail person and look after whoever you capture. Animal handling is a new one. I don't think that's as necessarily as important as the rest, but you do generally start with an animal. So that could be a way of training your animal quicker at the start of the game. But again, we're not going to get too fussed about that. Cooking is a pretty important one. It's good to have someone who's a decent cook and therefore can make decent meals quickly. Uh, construction, again, not too fussed. You make as lots of buildings throughout the game, so that will gradually grow, uh, get bigger. And then we have growing, which is, uh, again, a, a people with a higher growing skill will be able to uh, plant uh, and look after your crops quicker than usual. And the other one is research. Again, uh, people who have a slightly higher research skill means that you can open up stuff through the research bar and get the more advanced stuff quicker. Not fussed by any of that this time round. The only thing that I ask is that they are incapable of nothing because if they're lacking here, I need them to be able to do everything. Now, um, the other thing to look for when it comes to these colonists are the traits. Now, as you can see, this one is a depressive, uh, but they are steadfast. So um, although they're permanently miserable, they don't break as easily, which is okay. It's, it's not the worst, but... Uh, 
I think, again, as far as this playthrough is concerned, we don't really want anyone with a major negative trait. And a depressive is a major negative trait. So let's just randomize that. Again, we've got uh, this guy is incapable of things, so we can't really settle on them. So we'll just click through until we get none. There we go. So we have incapable of nothing. Traits of psychi psychically sensitive, which isn't good if anything crazy happens. And they're greedy. Beatrice needs a really impressive bedroom. That's fine. We can sort that up. So pretty even as far as this is concerned. Uh, good at construction and mining, which might come in helpful. Seeing as we have a lot of rocks around, so we can get her mining. No good at research, but the rest are pretty average. So that's our first colonist. And then this one, geez, is incapable of pretty much everything. Dumb labour, cleaning, hauling, plant work, mining. So what can you do? You can talk. You can talk. And you can... Yeah, typical artist. You can paint and you can talk. Nothing much else. So we'll get rid of you. Incapable of none. And the traits are aesthetic. Prefers to live with a bedroom that's not too impressive. So a complete opposite to... Beatrice, which is fine by me, and is psychically dull, so it's pretty much the exact opposite of Beatrice, which is fine by me. And this one has a, a low growing score, but um, it, it is keen. Uh, these flames represent a, a passion, or if it's two, it's burning passion. That generally means that they get to learn that particular thing quicker than, say, construction here, because there's no passion for that. So as you can see that, they learn it at 0.3 of a percent higher then they would do this which is 1.5 times not percent times 0.3 times and 1.5 times so quicker that's what i'm trying to say going to be quicker uh, now we do have a uh, researcher within who is this landale so uh, that's good for me i, I can live with that uh, it's a nice compliment so far so we've got a shooter construction growing and a mining uh, and then we have a med a doctor which is good uh, a researcher and a little bit of cooking so let's have a look at Chan. What can Chan do? Well, he's incapable of intellectual and crafting, which, again, we don't want anyone who can uh, do that. So there we go. Incapable of nothing. Neurotic. A fast walker and a masochist. Okay, I mean, there's nothing exciting about, something exciting about getting hurt. She doesn't know why. She's just wired differently. That's fine. And because there's what's classed as a couple of negative traits here, it means that the overall skills aren't that bad. And she pretty much covers the rest tip top i think that's a nice selection without going too deeply into it that's a very nice selection so we have beatrice uh, who is uh, 49 years old we have landale and we have cami so we have all females okie dokie we shall start our all female colony wow cami's old 97 uh, let's have a quick look at the health so it's got a bad back, so can't move very quick, uh, and can't manipulate stuff too much. So we better make you uh, uh, the house person. Fine, fine. As I said, we, we, we're going for random. random. Random's good, so let's just crack on with our all-female colony. The three of you awake in your crito-slip sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. Okie dokie. So, get rid of that. And there are my three girls. Now, before we crack on, let's just have a quick look around the map. It is quite a large map. And... Uh, it's not... Wow. That's not good. Uh, generally when you see rooms like that, there's stuff inside which is either very, very good for you or very, very bad. Uh, but we got some, well, some elephants. That's pretty cool. Uh, we've got a steam geyser, which will be good for power later. And we're actually naturally quite well walled in. We've got a natural choke here. Uh, there's quite a large section here, but that's Fine. We don't have to worry too much about that. And we could always cut this off as well. Maybe dig a little into the rocks here. But yeah, that's, a, that's a nice little starting area. So first things first. Now we have had a quick look around. Let's have a, another quick look at... Oh, we've got a little Scotty dog. 
Yorkshire Yorkshire Terrier. Age 14. Does that mean you are... Yep, there we go. So our, our little pet to start off with has dementia and two cataracts. So it's going a little bit crazy and can't see for shit. Great. you got to live random. Got to live random. But we do have a, a couple of little areas we can start just building up a, a little bedroom, maybe a, a little uh, kitchen area and, and a frozen section, which is, which is good. We'll get the power on the go there. Oh, this is going to be an interesting playthrough. Okay, first things first. Let's just get back to our people. So, who is the best shot? So we have Beatrice, who is a sh four. We have Cammy, which is a six, but she's the one who can't move too quick, so we don't want to be sending her out. And Landau cannot shoot at all. So Landau will get the knife that we start with. There we go. You take that. We'll put them back onto one now. Uh, Cammy can have the pistol because she won't be getting involved unless she really has to be. And then Beatrice can take the rifle. Now there are a few provisions you start with in this game. We have uh, some survival meals, which we shall unforbid, and some medicine, again, which will unforbid. And then you get some silver, which is the currency in the game, and some building materials, which is, in this case is wood. Usually you get a bit of metal. At least I thought, there we go, there's the metal. And we'll just unforbid that. There we go. So, first things first. Let's make a sleeping spot for them. So as it stands right now, we can't really... There we go. We can't really start making beds for them. Uh, there'd be no point in making beds because this is only going to be temporary for the time being. But we do need just a... Bit of a sleeping spot for uh, the colonists and the doggy, just to get them going in the evening. And then if we make, where would be a good area for our stockpile? I suppose until we actually make this into a fridge, we'll just make the stockpile uh, zone. There we go. We'll just make the stockpile within this little area here. Now, let's put, let's keep the draft out. Let's say put a door here which faced into the, the rock should be fine and don't want to be wasting any sort of metal on that for the time being so there we go just to keep our aesthetics up now at this point I would usually go into the um, the work segment and decipher who's best at what and what they they should be doing within the colony i'm not going to worry about that for the time being i'll do that in the off time in between the episodes uh, because that can be pretty boring but i will go into that in the second episode and just tell you what i've done for them and, and why so uh let's have a look at around uh, there are somewhere out here oh some rhino now in this version which is brand new you can actually tame all the animals on the map. I don't really want to be taming them as a priority right now. But it's good to know that, worst case scenario, I can get some rhinoceroses, rhinoceri, rhinos, on my side. Uh, what else have we got? Anything else that's worth picking up? Oh, there's a lone rhino there. Oh, there we go. And there's a bit more steel there, which will come in useful. And then here, these are all just random rocks, which again you can pick up. You can refine these into blocks uh, once you make the appropriate crafting table. But again, that that'll be later on down the uh, down the road. All some elephants as well. Four of them. Did I spot there? Yeah, that's all the steel there. And we have a llama or alpaca. There we go. Ooh, what are they? Boomalopes. Boomalopes. That can't be good. That, yeah. They wouldn't call something boomalopes unless there was something which uh, happened when you killed them. Uh, we also have some wild boar. Uh, the old faithful boom rats. Now, I know they explode when you kill them, so I presume that's what would happen when you kill the boomalopes. So I won't be sending anyone into melee attack them. And I think that's everything as far as hauling is concerned this time round. I can't see oh, some more, <laughs> more food there. I'm going to need that. 
and we've got some muffalos. In fact, we've got two lots of uh, bulos. Right. Yeah, it's, this isn't a bad start. They're, just gonna, they're starting to put stuff in here. We should probably add a few more walls to this. And throw in a wooden door as well. Now, uh, in the old versions, I did used to make a walled off area where the only way would be in through kill po uh, points, uh, like choke points. But the problem is, in the past couple of alphas, Tynan introduced a certain raider who could actually just drill through your wall and get in wherever they wanted to. Now, generally, they're put off a little bit more by these large, thick sections. I say put off. They're not really put off. They um, it just takes them longer to get through as opposed to a single wall section. They're actually uh, going around uh, having to drill through this, and it gives you a lot more time to prepare for them. So where we are at the moment, as far as natural defence is concerned, is, is pretty good. You can wall off here, here, and sort of loop it around here. Maybe make a bit of a kill zone here. So yeah, I'm, I'm feeling confident for this uh, for this first one. Now the girls should be getting close to going to bed we're looking at nine o'clock in the evening at the moment pretty warm though for january the first so i, I don't think you'll have to worry too much about what's that oh sorry it's our little terrier where's he going he's going to bed well he's not so crazy that he doesn't know where his bed is uh but i think we shall leave it there for the time being um i will uh, in between episodes just sort out the the, the work uh, bar for, for everyone and maybe plan out what I'm going to be doing in the next one so thank you for watching I hope it hasn't been too slapdash uh, it's, uh, it's a lot to take in um, I haven't played this for a while and uh, it's surprising how much you forget at the time of uh, not playing it for three or four months but um, I will uh, guess I'll be uh, you know seeing you on the next one so f please throw a like my way show that you like this game and I will carry on uh, playing it well I'm going to carry on playing it anyway I, I love this game <laughs> but uh, let's see if you, you like it too Anyway, I'm just jibber-jabbering on, so I'm going to shut up now. Have a good one. Take it easy. Wait.